time for uh, the Honda block. <clears throat> this, all four cylinders have been bored uh, and they're ready to be honed right now. So we're over here in my honing machine. This is an Axe Equipment um, cylinder hone that uses sunning uh, stones and shoes and a sunning honing fixture right there. Uh, it's obviously powered and everything. It is a manual machine, so you have to manually stroke up and down. Um, but it's a pretty good machine. It does a great job getting really true, accurate cylinders. So basically the honing process is a process where you take um, these, what we call uh, honing stones. And what they do is they're, they have a grit that's adhered to this little aluminum uh, body. And the grit itself goes into the cylinder and it spins. And that's what actually, you know, cuts the metals, the grit, the, the pores in the grit give a sharp edge on each part of the grit particle uh, and it cuts the metal out. It's a pretty slow process but because it's slow you can accurately adjust and basically fix any problems that might be in the cylinder like if there were any taper or out of roundness or whatever uh, this can correct that. Uh, in, in our case we're pretty straight. The cylinders are very good. Um, we don't have really a whole lot of issues so it's going to be a very straightforward honing job. Alright so we're going to take this in two steps with the rough stone, which is, I think, what's in the machine right now. These are 200 and, uh, I'm sorry, these are 70 grit. Uh, so it's a pretty coarse stone. Hopefully, maybe you can see that. Um, really rough, coarse stone. And then we're going to follow that up with the fine stones, which are uh, the 280 grit, which is the one that I had just a second ago, this one over here. So, anyways. Um, let me get the machine set up real quick and then we'll come back and I'll show you. How all right, so I'm all set up, ready to go. Um, the thing about honing, there, there's a couple of little tricks to it. So we already know that we have grit that's gonna be used to, to actually cut the surface of the sleeve. Because these um, honing stones are porous, they need to stay very clean. So we have honing oil, which is this stuff right here. Uh, honing oil is pretty thick base oil. Um, that is mixed with basically a mineral spirit, it's like a paint thinner, so it thins itself way out. What that's used is, is to lubricate the, the cut while it's happening so that you don't have any uh, excessive friction or anything that would cause any problems. It's also used to cool the cylinder, so as you start to build heat from the friction that's happening, it, it keeps it nice and cold. And then most importantly, it's used to clean the stones. So because it has the mineral spirits in there, it basically keeps the stones from loading up with the debris that we're removing from the cylinder. So all those little shavings, very, very fine particles, instead of packing into the, the pores of the stone, they stay really clean. The honing fixture itself uses two stones, which that's one, one across from it, 180 degrees away from it, and then two what we call shoes. And these are the shoes, they're basically just a piece of aluminum um, in this case, it's aluminum. And what it does is it just kind of rubs on the inside of the cylinders and helps to center the, the fixture, you know, with the cutting going on. So it just centers everything up. There's two shoes, two stones. They work off of like a rack and pinion. So if you look at the stone right here, it has these teeth, kind of like a rack gear. And you have this center shaft that goes through the middle that will drive the stones in and out. So you can actually adjust the size of the honing process by you know turning this pinion so that slides into the middle everything lined up here it slides right in and what can happen is as you rotate that shaft it drives the shoes and the stones out it makes for a larger bore so it's very adjustable uh, it's what we call rigid hone because the stones and shoes themselves are rigidly connected to that rack and pinion instead of like on a spring or something like a flex hone would be. All right, so got everything kind of set up. Uh, the honing oil is going where it needs to go. The shoes are the coarse shoes, re shoes ready for the initial bore. I'm sorry, initial hone. Um, so I'm just going to adjust this a little bit since I took it apart, and then get my hose inserted into the cylinder. There's no pressure on it right now, so what I need to do is to use that rack and pinion. And tighten the stones just a little bit to get a little bit of pressure in the cylinder so the shoes are pushing against the cylinder and then I'm going to turn the cutter on and see it spin that's what it's supposed to do um, what I want to do first is verify that 
I've got my bottom set properly. So in other words, when I go down into the cylinder, I want to stop at a certain point. I don't want to go too deep because uh, there's, there's stuff down there that I don't want the stones to contact, like main bore webbing and stuff in there. So I'm just going to go slow to begin with, all the way to the bottom, just to verify that it stops, and that's my stop, and nothing contacts. So that's exactly what we want. All right, so the deal with honing is it's all about the speed of how fast we're, we're spinning and how much pressure we're putting on there and also the speed of our stroke. So I'm going to stroke up and down at a fairly quick pace so that it continues to cut and cut and cut into the cylinder, opening the cylinder up that little bit that we need to open it up. And then also that it, um, that it gives the proper surface finish, which we'll talk about a little bit more as we go. Right, just doing a little bit of stroking. At this point, I'm going all the way to the bottom of the cylinder and then I'm coming up out of the cylinder, it's probably hard for you to see, but I'm coming up out of the cylinder just about an inch. So the stones are coming up just an inch, a uh, very, very little bit there, but I'm just stroking away. Like it's job. Right, I'm gonna pull the hone out of the cylinder and then I'm gonna go ahead and check the size and see what kind of progress we're making. So to do that, I have my dial bore gauge. The dial bore gauge is, is already set to our final bore size that we want. Uh, and it's basically a measuring device that has a dial that can read in thousands of an inch what it is. This particular dial bore gauge is, is a federal, uh, very, very precise dial bore gauge. Uh, each number that you see is one thousandth of an inch, so each line that you see in between the numbers are a tenth of that, so a tenth of a thousandth, which is incredibly precise. So it'll allow us to read exactly what the cylinder is and get a a very accurate bore when it's all said and done. It's going to be really accurate. So, go ahead and insert my dial bore gauge into the bore. It's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. And I got a little bit of taper at the bottom of the bore, like maybe a couple of ten thousandths. So I'm going to work the bottom of the bore just a little bit, but we're actually looking really good. Because it's tapered a little bit too tight at the bottom, I'm going to stroke the bottom of the bore a couple of times extra um, just to, to open that up a little bit to help straighten the bore back out. All right, here goes. Okay, so that helps with that. Hopefully, let's double check. Good. That's good. Okay, that's not bad. Looks pretty good. We can move on to the next one. This is just our roughing stage. So this is our, our coarse stones. Um, to get our final finish that we want, we're going to switch to a fine stage. So I'm not going all the way yet. I want to move to the next cylinder and then work our way up. So slide over to this cylinder and then do the same thing. Double check that our, that our stop at the bottom is still positioned correctly, that there's no difference in this cylinder versus the last. So the first step, I'm just going to go slow all the, way, all the way to the bottom. All right, so I've positioned the camera a little bit better, hopefully you can see a little bit more what's going on. Um, I've already roughed in all four cylinders, and now we're getting to the finishing stage. So we're going to move to this cylinder right here. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and finish it, but first I just want to double check my size, make sure I know where I'm at. That's good. Yep, so we look pretty straight. There's a little bit of uh, taper towards the bottom. It's a little tight, so I'll work on the bottom with my fine stones and correct that. And when this is all done, it'll be a nice, um, accurate, right on size board. No taper. Let's see how this goes. So these are, again, the 280 grit fine stones. Um, I'm going to be very cautious of my speed of stroke because in this process I'm creating the, the proper cross hatch that we need for the rings to break in properly. Um, you'll be able to see that. Work in the bottom. The whole speed. 
Crosshatch looks really good too. So everything's coming together the way we want it to. You get kind of a feel um, for the machine, you know, after you've used it a whole bunch of times, how much it takes to make a certain cut. And that is right on the money. It's nice. All right, that one's good. That one's done. Uh, so basically, just carry out the process to the rest of the cylinder. So. Once that's done, I'll show you a little bit more of what this crosshatch is, how it looks, um, maybe explain why we need it. Okay, so about 10 minutes later, they're all done and ready to go. Uh, tilted the block a little bit to hopefully help you see some of the crosshatch, what we're talking about with that surface finish. Uh, you can see in the cylinders themselves, there's a nice, almost like an X pattern cut into the cylinders at the home. You know has created and that's the crosshatch so the whole idea of, of a good crosshatch is it gives a surface finish for the new piston rings that are going to be installed in these cylinders to break in to seat in perfectly um, so the reality of, of life is there's no such thing as perfect uh, including a freshly bored and honed cylinder uh, there's it's not a hundred percent round and a hundred percent straight the rings that we're going to be installing, they're brand new, but they're not going to be 100% rounder either. So you'll have two different circles that don't exactly match. So it takes a, it takes a little bit of a, a break-in process to get the rings to seat to those cylinders, meaning they need to wear themselves into kind of a uniform shape. So almost like a very, very fine file, the crosshatch, the little scratches, that are produced in that. I'm trying to get it to not be blurry. Anyways, yeah, the cross hatch right there um, will act as a bit of a, a coarse kind of grit that will work against the rings to help basically file the rings down to the proper shape to match what that cylinder is. Um, it's been file is, is probably too strong of a word. It's less than that. I mean, it's just basically lightly. Uh, seating them into one another so you're not going to get a lot of wear out of the cylinder or out of the rings but the idea is that it, they wear in together if the cross hatch is a bit too rough uh, in other words it's you know too coarse or if the angles are too steep um, or i'm sorry less not steep enough then that'll act as a um as more of an aggressive break-in process which is in some cases is a good thing but a lot of times it's not, especially if you're looking for durability, uh, something that lasts a long, long, long time. You don't want the rings to wear down during the break-in process. You just want them to basically seat into the cylinder. If the cross hatch is too fine, like really smooth, and it may be too vertical, you know, the, the, the X pattern is too steep, then the rings don't tend to seat in. And you can get a motor that's brand new rebuilt um, that, you know, might smoke. And that's just because the, the rings never fully seated to the cylinders and their gaps, uh, it, albeit very small gaps, but still gaps in between the, the rings and the cylinder itself. So getting the right ring and cross hatch kind of combination is critical to how this motor is going to run. There's a lot of debate on what type of cross hatch is, is required for different applications and different processes of plateau honing and different things for, you know, a different discussion for a different day. Uh, but for this case, you know, 280 grit at about a 40 degree um, cross hatch is, is what we need. So it's gonna it's gonna work out really good. Um, yep. So anyways, that's a Honda H22 uh, with 
four cast iron sleeves installed that have been bored and honed to the proper size. Uh, the last phase of this whole thing is just decking the top off to get rid of the, the excess of lip of the sleeve and to make sure that the, the deck itself is flat all the way across. Uh, this particular motor blew a head gasket and that's why I got the car. Uh, I got it cheap because of that a project car type thing. And it had about eight thousandths warpage in the deck. Um, so it had to come out and I had to get decked minimum. And then, you know, I noticed some galding and stuff in the, in the aluminum cylinder sleeves. So yeah, here we are. We're trying to improve on, on the design and make this thing a motor that'll last um, and that would handle upgrades if, if that was the direction we want to go at some point. So, um, all right, so next step is going to be decking. Um, so, see you then.